The Samsung Galaxy S21 series is launching on the 14th of January, much earlier this year, and many upgrades. The first flagship launch by Samsung. So what are the differences between the Galaxy S21, the Galaxy S21 Plus, and the Galaxy S21 Ultra? Which one should you go for? Which one is worth paying extra for? Or should you just go with the lower version and save yourself a bit of money overall? In this one, I wanna compare the specs, the prices of all of these phones, so that you can make the decision on launch day which one you might want to get. Before that though, if you haven't got a VPN yet, what are you doing? 68% off NordVPN and three months free VPN right now. They're running a great deal. Check them out via the link in the description. Firstly, when it comes to the design, we are getting some changes versus the S20 series. Overall though, it's really about the size. So the design on all of these phones is the same and there is a new design from the camera array into the back and the S21 Ultra having a much bigger camera array than the other two. The difference between the S21 and the S21 Plus is really in the screen size, although a lot of the other specs are the same. So really, you're gonna have to choose which one is the right fit for you. The Galaxy S21 has a 6.2 inch display. To put that into some context, we had the iPhone 12 series this year, both the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 Pro sharing an identical design on the outside. They were 6.1 inch displays. Now they have very small bezels overall, apart from that notch of course, but the S21 coming a little bit bigger at 6.2 inches than that. So to really put that into context, the S21 is the same size as those, but then moving up to the S21 Plus, this is a 6.7 inch display. This is a huge, huge phone. This is the same size as the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So that may make your decision already. The S21 Plus, even though it's only called the Plus and not the Ultra, is going to be as big as the iPhone 12 Pro Max. The phones, as we've seen, renders and also hands-on links do look a little bit more curved and thinner overall. So they might be slightly easier to handle, but certainly the Plus is a big phone. The S21 Ultra this year coming with a 6.8 inch display. This is actually down from 6.9 inches what we got last year. Now this may be an error with the uh, leaks, but to be honest, it's 0.1 of an inch. We should be getting a slightly smaller device in the Ultra and a bigger screen because they shrunk those bezels. Not only the size of the displays, but the technology in the displays is different as well. The S21 and the S21 Plus, they'll be using a screen display technology called LTPS OLED. And this is the same screen tech as we saw in the S20 phones. So there's no upgrades here. You get 120 Hertz refresh rates and you get full HD resolution. So there's actually no quad HD resolution in those phones. So you could say that's actually a downgrade from the S20 phones because they had 120 Hertz and they had uh, quad HD resolutions. Now you couldn't use those together. You either had to use a high resolution and a low refresh rate or a high refresh rate and a low resolution. Well, this time that choice isn't there for you. The displays are also flat. So the S20 phones had a very slight curve off at the edges. Well, the S21 and the S21 Plus don't have that. They are truly flat displays. That is in contrast to the S21 Ultra, which does keep that very small kind of 2.5D curve at the edges. But the S21 Ultra has this new type of screen tech, the same as the Note 20 Ultra. It's able to vary the refresh rate of the screen. So it can go up to 120 Hertz, it can actually turn it down as well. And the reason you'd want the refresh rate lower is to save battery life. So you can have an always on display with a very low refresh rate. But of course for gaming, it can switch it right up to 120. The S21 Ultra will also support W Quad HD resolution and that high refresh rate, and you can use those together. So in terms of screen technology, and specs and features, the S21 Ultra really stands out here. You have a new type of screen hardware technology. It can vary the refresh rate. It has a higher resolution. It should be more efficient in terms of the battery life as well because it has that new tech. The cameras are a big difference too. And yet the S21 and the Plus, exactly the same. And the Ultra, again, just goes a step further. So coming to the S21 and the Plus first, we have a 12 megapixel main image sensor solid there. The 12 megapixel image sensor though is supported 
by a 12 megapixel ultra wide sensor. This apparently is getting an upgrade. So a new bit of hardware, a Sony image sensor under there. Supporting those two 12 megapixel sensors, we have a 64 megapixel three times zoom lens. So a high uh, image resolution on that lens. The reason for this is because Samsung do want to support 8K video recording. So that high resolution image sensor can do it. So a three times zoom with high resolution. All of the phones, by the way, supporting 8K video recording at 30 frames a second or 24 frames a second, depending on your region. 4K up to 60 frames a second, and then 1080p, which is a full HD resolution, all the way up to 240 frames per second slow-mo. The big difference though, in terms of the hardware, the features is the S21 Ultra once more. This thing is a beast and it's not just better than the other phones, it's gonna be one of the best cameras on any phone this year. You have a 108 megapixel main image sensor. Now for me, high resolution, that much resolution, it's just not needed. And we saw in the S20 Ultra, all the problems that come with a high resolution sensor. You get bad dynamic range. The S20 Ultra had massive focusing issues as well. It was just kind of a miss from Samsung, but they are improving this sensor. It's a new sensor that they're using here. Different to the other two phones though, Samsung will be using that main image sensor for their 8K video recording. Now moving on to the ultra wide, it's the same 12 megapixel ultra wide sensor, the upgrade there. Then the zoom cameras are totally different. The other two just have one three times zoom, but the ultra has a three times zoom, which is 10 megapixels, and then a 10 times zoom range at 10 megapixels. So two zoom cameras at 10 megapixels. In terms of the hardware as well, leaks suggest that the periscope zoom used in the 10 times zoom camera has been reduced in size and Samsung are using fewer refractions of light. So they're using fewer mirrors and that should mean that the light reaching the sensor is purer and has less distortion. So we should be getting higher image quality, better colors and dynamic range from those image sensors. When it comes to the battery sizes, we have a 4,000 milliamp hour in the S21, 4,800 in the S21 Plus, 5,000 milliamp hours in the S21 Ultra. Like I said, the screen technology in the Ultra is different and it's more energy efficient. So you shouldn't need as big of a battery in that phone to give you a similar battery life. Charging specs are not getting any bumps, at least on the specs sheet. It's gonna be 25 watts for the lower two, 45 watts for the Ultra. There will of course be wireless charging and wireless reverse charging. And according to most rumors that we've seen, no chargers in the box. They're taking them away. They did mock Apple for it, for taking it away, and they mocked Apple and then took it away themselves. Now, some countries may still have it because of local regulations and laws, but for most markets, you should assume that this isn't gonna be coming in the box. The chipsets in all of these phones are going to be exactly the same. So depending on your region, you might get an Exynos 2100 chipset or a Snapdragon 888. The biggest difference, of course, is between the Snapdragon and the Exynos, but all of these are gonna be getting the same version. So if you think, well, I want a very powerful chipset, you're gonna get that in the S21, just like you are in the Ultra. It does look though like the Exynos is catching up to the Snapdragon in terms of benchmarks and performance. It's not really real world usage, but it's nice to see that the Exynos is catching up a little bit to the Snapdragon chipsets. When it comes to the prices of these phones, some good news with the S21 and the Plus, it looks like we should be getting uh, some price decreases in these phones. And that's because of various reasons. The main one being that the screen is flat and so is cheaper for Samsung. The S21 series was definitely a bit expensive, but the projected prices for these, the S21 coming in at around $800. The S21 Plus coming in at around $1,000. So you should be getting a much cheaper price for that base model. And then the S21 Ultra coming in at around $1,300. The Ultra should be getting a little price increase. There's a lot of new technologies in here. It is really an Ultra phone and they took the shackles off in terms of all the specs. For most people, the S21 6.2 inch screen is going to be enough phone, but of course everyone is different. Let me know which one you will choose or would want to choose out of those three phones in the comments though. Be sure to get your discounts with NordVPN 68% off three months free VPN protection for your surfing online. That is it for this one though. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't done already and I'll see you in the next one.